my name is Zizrin with another Metamorphosis 3.9 guide and this is a little bit more experimental because it's something that just got reworked. So this is a guide for Explosive Arrow which looks really strong on paper and uh, I know a lot of people are very excited to play bows this league so we mathed up a build and uh, it should look really nice. So just want to say that a lot of the math is by TV. so if it's great, good job Zizrin, if it's bad, Sai, you've messed up. Okay, just remember that. Very important. So if you haven't watched one of my League Start Guides before, uh, make sure that you like uh, watch through the next part. It's basically me explaining how we use Path of Building. Uh, and we see pretty different from most content creators doing like a step-by-step -step through the leveling process. Um, so make sure you watch that. If you're familiar with it, there's going to be a button down below letting you skip in the description. But first, you need Path of Building. Path of Building is a third-party program that you can download and it's in the description down below. It's completely safe and most people use it. It's a very powerful tool that lets you plan out your builds and import items, stuff like that. Now, once you have Path of Building, you can go and import the Path of Building link here by pasting it here. Once you have that, it should look... Well, depends what build you're importing because I'll use this for everything. But uh, it should look like the build of the video you're watching. And what we do, and I'm using a Gladiator Thunder Cyclone build here as an example, I show a step-by-step -step of what the skill tree looks like at certain levels. So at early levels, it's very, very easy, especially if you're a new player, to follow. And I also say when to ascend, and the... Um, and the ascension points are generally here and i'll talk about that in the specific video as well and why things are chosen um, but as you can see the skill tree is evolving over time and sometimes there will, there will be variations for you know if it's like different weapons if it's 100 200 and a lot of things like that but wait there's more um under the skills we usually do um all like the different skills plus the leveling one i'm trying out a new um sort of like yeah, alphabetized group so this is like your main attack skill so as you can see here you have ground slam to 8 to 12 but at 12 it gets replaced by sunder and i kept that in the in the same like a just so you're understanding what i'm replacing it with if there's no leveling leveling video accompanying it so uh hopefully that'll make it very clear same here with obviously at early level you're using ancestral protector and then you replace that same b with Warchief later on. Um, so we'll also put notes, like for example here, um, Pulverize doesn't exist yet in Path of Building. And there's a few things that just, they're just not in Path of Building at the time that I'm making this guide. Um, this is gonna happen a lot on, uh, on videos that are made around launch, just Path of Building's not updated yet. So that's just not what much we can do about. And um, for the most part, I'll always put, um, gems in a priority level like my my first priority is always going to be onslaught just because it ups your clear speed so much while while killing um and you can see like uh, different utilities and stuff and another example here is plus blood and sand because that again doesn't exist in path of building um we also have uh different types of items so here we have early game axes mid game axes and in game axes um i think the jewels are displayed here yes so what the way i do this is i i make some like fairly okay items that are like you know depending on how fast you play somewhere that you'll have them between day one to three and um if you don't know how to get a tabula for example you can farm that in act nine fairly easily in blood aqueduct and uh, we go through here and it's um i never in my guides will put resists on the life gear because just you need to be resist capped that's very important 75 percent all resist remember that you lose resist in act 5 and 10. um and then on the jewels i'll try to do four slot jewels and try to say as many good stats as possible for that build so there's no like you don't see the same one twice here but all of these work for the build hopefully that'll help and then this is generally how I recommend rolling flasks. Um, there's even more in the notes as well. Uh, Mr. Madiki will generally go through and tell you exactly where to uh, buy the skill gems 
that you're needed. This is actually a tip by another streamer called Lyric who said it was sad there was nothing like this in Path of Exile guide. So I was like, that is actually a great idea for new players. Um, so we have that. So if you're wondering um, uh, where to buy things or if it can't be bought by your specific class, we call it a mule. They have to use another character to use it uh, or to buy it. And uh, all the details for that is in here. So hopefully it now makes more sense how to use the guides and how they work. Let's continue with the build guide. So as I said, this is an explosive arrow build and it should be really good both on trade leaks, solo cell found, and should be fairly strong for especially clearing. This is a dead eye build, so not something that would be crazy focused on bossing, but it should definitely be able to wipe out um, like standard map bosses very quickly. Once you actually have to like, you know, out survive a boss is probably going to struggle a bit more. Um, things like Uber Elder could be a bit rougher on this. So definitely a little bit less survival. Um, some other variations and options for this build is it would be very easy to do um, Champion, Juggernaut, or Chieftain. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of other content creators making exact guides for that. But uh, watching this guide as well, you should be able to figure those out if that's what you're interested in. That would be more like hardcore variants. Um, this would be good on hardcore as well, but obviously not for bosses. On softcore, this should be fairly okay for bosses because it should have... Uh, should be a very fast build and a lot of damage. It'll also be fairly good on Raider. Now, I want to have some early notes and talk about this a little bit because um, Path of Building doesn't like handle all the maths and like some of the new things like the new Barrage support gem is not in yet. So, Psy has done the math and uh, so this is assuming that obviously Cool Rain attacks extremely fast uh, so it might look a bit weird uh, on paper and I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of great questions. Why is there 7,700 more damage on this Quill Rain? How do I get it? But uh, yeah, so this is the calculations is assuming 76 arrows and we've temp chained the enemy as well. So that makes them explode slower. Uh, so this is particularly for your single target. Your, um, your A weak there would not look like this. But uh, this would sort of be the damage there. The other thing that uh, Path of Building doesn't math correctly is the damage from the Diady on Dawn. Enemies ignited by an attack burn 35% faster. So that's why we have the 43% more damage with Ignite there. Just want to make sure so people don't get confused or think we're adding any fake numbers. But yeah, it should have great single target damage and hopefully really good clear as well. As far as um, the leveling and stuff like that, you just level up with Burning Arrow. And um, that should be great. And at level 28, you can already move over to Explosive Arrow. Having a Vial Burning Arrow could probably be pretty fun for single target damage as well. It looks like it's going to chunk down enemies pretty hard. Um, so you have a Frenzy with a Curse on hit. This is going to like keep your Frenzy charges up. But you can just use Blood Rage as well. Obviously not going to help you in boss scenarios. But here we are. Decoy Totem is really good and helps make bosses a lot easier when they're busy attacking the Totem and not you. Skitterbots as well, if you're un unsure of why this is a really good thing for the build, it's basically 15% more damage because it does a 15% shock on your enemies. Now remember that this uh, patch also introduces things like Awakened Skill Gems, which could be really huge for Explosive Arrow. For example, Awaken Greater Multiple Projectiles, which is one more arrow, and you also have Awakened Fire Pen. So there's a lot of cool things in this patch to look out for as well, and I'm hoping some of the new modifiers from the four additional Exalted Orbs might end up being really good for this build. So to talk a little bit about leveling, early on you want to try to have a fast attacking bow and if you can get plus one bow gems, plus one gems, that's great as well. Quiver, you just want to try to get like damage or elemental damage and life and all your other gear, just like generic, very, very generic gear, life, wed, wed is uh, elemental damage with attack skills um, as well. And uh, I never really bother putting resists on my gear and my guides. The most important thing is just get resist calved and remember that you lose resists in Act 5 and in Act 10. One of the more important things in Path of Exile, and I try to say this in all my guides, is remember to roll your flasks. You want to have bleed and freeze immune and curse immune, ideally at least when you get to maps. Um, they're very, very important. And then after that, the uh, shock immune is really nice as well. And uh, so here are some good examples of flasks. Jade is huge. Um, very, very big survival. 
And a granite flask would be good if you want to use Vile Molten Shell. Some jewel stats you can use would be like area damage, uh, fire damage, uh, attack speed is nice, and uh, I would try to get life on every single jewel you use. End game, again, fairly generic gear for this, and you can use uh, Combs Heart. Quill Rain's very easy to get as well, and if you are using a Combs Heart, you could try to get two six in Quill Rains, uh, and then swapping those around. So one of the things that's really great about Quill Rain is that there is a divination card for a six thing short bow. I believe it's a uh, fairly low item level or item level 50. However, these are very easy to chance into a quill rain, and that's how you can get multiple six and quill rains fairly easily. Um, I think the most I've ever used to chance a quill rain was four or 500 chance orbs and then CRs, but a lot of the time it's happened in like less than a hundred, which is uh, fairly cheap. Um, so the, the quill rain card, the porcupine, so some of the maps where this drops would be Gardens, Plaza, Terrace, and the High Gardens. And it has a fairly high drop rate. However, Embu tried farming it in Act 8, and he said never again. Uh, it's definitely doable, but uh, farming it pre-maps can be a bit of a pain. Pantheon Lunaris can be pretty good for clear speed. It makes you faster whenever you're near enemies. And Shakari is great, especially if you can upgrade the uh, uh, poison immunity. It's really nice. So there's a couple of different nodes that are good to anoint here. You can get um, Breath of Flames, Holy Fire, Arsonist, and uh, one of the duration nodes wouldn't be bad either, but that would be more for single target and would probably slow down your clear speed. Um, would be a pretty hefty single target increase. Now this is a dead eye as well, and make sure that you remember that you can always see in the actual um, path of building which, um, which ascendancy you take first. And we walk you through that as well. So this should be a very, very high clear speed build. So gems could end up being a bit of a problem once you have the Combs Heart. That's why you, some one idea is to have two bows, one for single target, one for clearing. Um, then you don't have to swap gems, but swapping gems is an alternative as well. Man issues should be fine. The cost of EA has been reduced to 10 and you can pick up the um, dual leech node in the dualist starter tree. Useful level uniques. Um, Quill Rain is usually pretty easy to get early on. So if you can get that, um, if this is your second or third character, then Quill Rain would be a great leveling bow. Other than that, just your standard stuff like Tabula, Gold Rim, uh, Wanderlust. Both Hyrie's Bite and Hyrie's Demise would be pretty good as well. Sacrificial Heart could be good as well for some additional damage. So this build isn't like an insane tank. It has a lot of damage and if you do get a Combs Heart, it should be like pretty beefy. Definitely not something that I would take into boss fights on hardcore. I would definitely be looking into like a Chieftain or Juggernaut or even a Champion setup for that. But it should have really good clear speed and really high damage and it should be really fun to play. So we're going to be scaling our Ignite with this build. So Malevolence is really good and Skitter Bots as well. Skitter Bots um, shocks the enemy target and then makes it take 15% more damage. The Spider Aura would be an option as well, however, this would be really hard to fit. So some of the financial hurdles this build might face is mostly the Combs Heart if you want to go for that. Other than that, everything should be really cheap for the build and you can just keep pouring money into getting more elemental damage with attacks and uh, just beefing up your damage. Do remember Pierce is very bad for Explosive Arrow as well because if you pierce something, it doesn't explode. The arrow doesn't stick on it. Hopefully this guide helps you. Do remember that Explosive Arrow isn't fully out yet, so I don't have any like live action footage of me playing this build yet. I'm hoping to play this on either a Juggernaut or a Deadeye myself during this league. I figured this would be a really, really fun uh, build to play. And while it's a Deadeye, it's like fairly tanky for a Deadeye. It just doesn't have a ton of sustain. If you have any questions or something wasn't clear enough explained in the guide, drop by my Twitch channel and me or one of my mods will be able to help you out. And remember, we're doing a huge giveaway this December, especially MSI is giving away a beefy desktop computer, and there's a lot of other cool stuff as well. So hope to see you there. Giveaways will be announced on Twitter. Thanks for watching, and try to die less than I do.